Today we're going to talk about how electronics like this little tiny circuit board can leave you stranded and unmovable under any circumstances. And it's not just Bentley. Let's get started. This is a very beautiful 2016 Bentley Continental GT Speed. And it is in very good condition. It's actually been in the shop before. It's from the St. Louis area. We did a few things. The customers enjoyed it. And now they have a new list, some new items they'd like addressed. They brought it back here on a trailer. And it was quite the ordeal for the owner to get this thing on a trailer. It was insane. And just like we saw in the Red Lotus or also in the Audi TT, just the moment that it was time to go to Omega, the car comes up with errors and issues only at that exact moment that completely immobilized him. It's really crazy. Let's take a look around this thing. It is gorgeous. So on the new Lexuses, the grills look like a giant hourglass and they just get bigger every year. But this one gets wider and it has a nice grill, kind of a mesh grill. And it looks really, really nice with the nice red accent strip along the bottom on the splitter or chin spoiler, whatever you want to call that. It has very, very beautiful wheels. Let's take a look at what size they are. They are 21 inch wheels. You can see right behind that tire is denoted speed right there on the quarter panel. There's some more of our very nice looking red accent along the bottom. And it also wraps around the rear. The trunk is popped open a little bit. We're going to show you some interesting things we can do here at Omega when we get towards that part in the video. But as you can see, it has dual exhaust pipes with the red accent that goes around all of it. It looks really, really nice. There's really no damage or anything going on except for right here. The owner said that the little plastic trim piece that goes right here just fell off on him one day. You actually had that happen on your Maserati, didn't you, Mrs. Wizard? Yeah, just went to the car wash and maybe it got lost there. I don't know, but had to get a new one. So he actually included one with the car. We're going to disassemble all that and take care of it and get it back together for him. Let's go ahead and hop under the hood. Here is our six liter W12. As you can see, it's a 12 cylinder, a V12, but it's not very long. It's only this long. And what they mean by W is just like in this picture here, the cylinders are staggered in a W shape. That's how they can squish the length of the engine really short and fit it in this engine bay. These things don't pop off very easily. They're all screwed on. We're not going to be taking a, a bunch of this stuff apart. We possibly be doing the valve cover gaskets on it. We'll maybe show you guys a clip of that later on. But this is a twin turbo W12, around 626 horsepower and 607 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 in four and a half, I think, and quarter mile in 12 and a half. It is a very, very fast car. Now those numbers, four and a half second, zero to 60 and 12 and a half second, quarter mile, it's like, there's cars that can do that that aren't so special like this. But here's the thing, this thing is a five or 6,000 pound car. It's very, heavy. It's a luxury car. It has all the appointments, the leather, everything is very heavy and yet it's still that fast. That's what's amazing. Easily this car can exceed 200 miles an hour. That was one of the hallmarks of the Continental GT when it came out. Easily exceed 200 miles an hour in a luxury car. Let's go ahead and jump into the interior which is partially disassembled because of some of the issues that the customer had getting it here. Okay, so ladies and gents, I kind of can't show you much of the gauge cluster because the steering wheel is turned and it's in locked position and I can't turn it on because the battery is disconnected. So I hope you're seeing through those holes, the gauge cluster back there. You'll have to live in mystery the rest of your life, not knowing how many miles are on this beautiful beast. But if we move up, it has a beautiful dark charcoal. I wouldn't say this is black. Dark charcoal leather wrapped dash with beautiful red stitching. It does have a lot of beautiful piano black and opera pulls to control our vents as we move down. Got a nice infotainment system 
and this starts to why it's here. We did keep the plastic here to keep everything protected because um, this part moves. <laughs> it's not attached at the moment. That's part of the issues. But it does have a beautiful split armrest that can go up and down. It has some nice sunglasses in there and of course some charging cables. But it also has very tiny little hidey holes with, oh, there we go, the end uh, in car cell phone with the Bentley symbol on it. How beautiful and obsolete now, unfortunately. But it's nicely hidden, nonetheless. As we move to our seats, you'll see that they have some nice diamond stitching on them, nice leather. Again, that charcoal gray with that red stitching, and again, red stitching on that headrest with the beautiful Bentley logo as well. One thing is, this doesn't have WeatherTech mats in it. No, no, these have custom mats that are leather with red stitching that goes all in there with Bentley stitching as well. But you do notice there is a cable there and Wiz is gonna be talking about that in a second because that was one of the saving graces to this repair. As we move to our back seat, more piano back in that center section, nice little spaces here, charging cable, another hidey hole, which has a cup holder in it at the moment. But diamond stitching on our seats, got a nice bolster. This is a four seater. So even though it is a luxury two door car, you can put four people in here. Of course, the headliner's in pristine shape. We wouldn't think anything less because this is such a beautiful car, but it is not Alcantara, which you would think of in many luxury cars. No, this is a leather wrapped ceiling. So we're back to the sideways steering wheel and it's in great shape. We've got the lovely flying bee in the center, although turned at the moment, but nice controls on there as well. And again, more leather accents with the red stitching. So it is quite beautiful in here, but let's figure out why is it here and why is all this stuff taken apart? So like I mentioned, the customer was ready to drive this car here or just drive it up on a trailer. I'm not sure what the plan was originally, but the day of, or maybe even the day before, he's like, all right, I'll get in my car, I'll start getting things set up so I can head to the Wizards. And in prior, there was real no major issues, nothing going on, and just at that moment, it wouldn't do anything. The keys were dead, and it had a warning on the dash that said, steering lock error. And it completely made this vehicle dead, like a brick. In the old term with your laptop, your computer, you've bricked your computer, it's completely useless, it won't even turn on. That's basically what happened with this car, completely dead. One of the things this car does is locks the parking brake whenever you turn it off. They're electronic. They have little motors on the brake calipers that lock them in place. And the thing that went wrong, I'll show you here in a minute, refused to allow you to release those. It also wouldn't come out of park. He was like, how in the world am I going to get this on a trailer? I've got to go tomorrow. I got to get this thing to the wizards. So he emailed back and forth and I told him some steps and things he could do and it did work. He got it onto a trailer amazingly. I don't know how he did the brake issue, but let me show you in the interior how we got it out of park. I'll talk about the brakes and then we'll look at what's going on with the steering column. So, like I mentioned, it had steering lock error, which is there's a steering lock that locks this steering wheel whenever you turn the key off. And whenever it goes bad, it won't lock the steering wheel anymore. And the computer senses that when you turn the car off, and then it knows. And the next time you turn it on, it won't allow you to use either battery. These have two batteries in the back, and you can turn the key to the left or to the right. Depending on if one battery is dead, you can try the other battery neither would do anything. It wouldn't even allow him to take it out of park. It, would, it was basically like someone just cut the power cables to the batteries, even though that hadn't been done. It had good power there. So how do we get it into neutral? Over here in the passenger footwell, if you remove some of the carpeting and panel, there's actually a cable you can pull. So you pull the little tip of the cable with one hand, and with the other hand, you will actually maneuver from park to neutral, and it'll actually get it into neutral for you. It's a manual release for the shifter. Sometimes next to the shifter on some cars there will be a button you can press or something that will release it for you, but on these cars it is a cable that's hidden underneath the passenger footwell area. We actually have some of this part where Grimes had this doing some testing and checking some things to make sure there was no errors in there and everything looks good inside of there. We did lots of checks and checks and checks and finally we got down to the heart of the problem and it is actually the steering lock mechanism 
which is this little guy. It has an electric motor and a circuit board that controls it. This is the control module, the circuit board. And it fits up here in this area in the back and it will run a rod back and forth to lock your steering wheel. Now Grimes is an electrical guru and he was able to, like you see here, take the cover off and actually pull the circuit board out and did some testing on the components and found that it was failed on the circuit board. Let me go get Grimes and let him explain it to you. So Grimes is actually diving into this and he got to the bottom of it and what exactly did you do here? So I got the cover off. They actually have this staked pretty well to keep anybody from getting into it mm -hmm. and uh, tested the board. Uh, there are actually some bad components on the board. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do since that's, uh, you know, not really a part that anybody can get other than uh, the dealer, we're just going to replace the board itself Yep. and uh, program it to this car and it'd be like nothing ever happened. So this is actually a uh, common fault in these, uh, the Touareg and the Cayennes. And a uh, similar issue with uh, a lot of the Mercedes, mid-2000s, uh, particularly the C-Class mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, the GLKs, which are basically the same thing. Uh, on those, the steering lock motors will fail. Half the time, the steering wheel will lock. And it's the same procedure. You replace the module or repair yeah. it. So I mentioned it a little bit ago at the beginning of the video that this is not just a Bentley problem. This very same component, like he mentioned, is in Porsches, is in Volkswagens, Audis, all kinds of different cars, and is a very common failure. So basically what you're saying is that like the main computers tell this thing to lock, and then something goes wrong, and it senses it's not locking. Yeah, so these are actually part of the immobilizer system uh, on Volkswagens. I think it's the ECU, the cluster, the key, mm -hmm. and, they, and the steering lock, and they all talk to each other, and that's what unlocks the steering and allows you to start the car. If one of those components is acting up, then you don't get start authorization and uh, you get nothing as we saw when we couldn't even connect the computer to it to diagnose it, so. Yep, so it definitely is why all the problems that he had, all from this little guy right here. All right, well, I'll let you go in the AC, knocked it out of the park, thanks for your help, yeah. and I'll finish out this. <laughs> So just like Grimes just described to you, this little module right here went bad. A little $10 circuit board. It probably cost them $10 to make that circuit board overseas somewhere. Just that went wrong, and the computers in this car said, I'm locking the parking brakes, I'm disabling the shifter, and I'm not allowing you to even turn the car on or even turn on the ignition. You're done. You're not going anywhere. Because it thought it was being broken into is basically what it thought. Like he mentioned, it's part of the immobilizer system. When it senses that this isn't working or something's wrong, that it can't lock the steering wheel, it says, oh my God, I'm being broken into. Someone's trying to steal me. So the next step is I need to shut this thing down. We're done. We're not going anywhere. So that's basically what happened, all from this little module. Now, we know what's wrong with this. We know what we've got to do to fix it and get him back in business. Let's head on back to the trunk to another common Bentley issue. We have actually fixed a lot of these lately on the Bentleys where this trunk motor, which the battery's disconnected, so I'll very gingerly, ginger, like my ginger beard here, open it. So this is actually an old trunk actuator motor out of a Bentley. This one's bad. The gears are stripped out inside. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but somebody maybe is not thinking and they try to forcefully close it and they strip the teeth out or something. But I've actually been getting quite a few Bentleys in where the trunk does this. It'll start to open or close and then it just falls, literally falls down. or And it's making like chattering noise like <coughs> It's because this guy. The last time I did one of these, it was like two or three grand to replace this module. But thanks to Steve Dibden at Additive Restoration, which there will be a link in the description below, they actually were able to make new gears for me. So we have a new gear here made by Additive Restoration. You can see their logo there. And this is also the drive gear that goes into the motor. It's got a kind of a metal sleeve or something over it. And this is kind of the pinion gear, I guess you'd call it. And operates this whole thing. So if you have one of these Bentleys and your trunk motor is acting up, making all kind of racket or actually almost falling on you, we can now rebuild your motor here at Omega with these gears. And I talked to Steve at Additive Restoration. We both agreed that no one else in the entire earth offers this service. 
they're going to be selling these kits. You can get them from them, or if you bring your, your Bentley here, we will order them for you and put them on. I have actually several in stock. We can fix it for you here at Omega without buying the entire module for literally half the cost. So this car is actually coming here for a complete different list of items like the valve cover gaskets and a few other issues like I mentioned already. But just as he was going to load it, the list got longer. Just like that. Now obviously his bill is going to be higher. It's not his fault. It's not my fault. It just happens that way sometimes and it really sucks. But I'm kind of glad that it did it. It's going to happen. Let's get it done. Get it on the trailer. We can solve that problem and also the other issues all in one visit. And he can take it back home and have all this handled and taken care of and behind him. So before this thing left, I definitely wanted to do a video and show you guys this beautiful GT Speed. It is very fast and very beautiful. It is in immaculate shape. We're waiting on some parts to show up and we can put the steering column back together and get that all operating like it should. Everything else will be taken care of as well. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this or any of the cars in the shop, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because more parts are coming in on the Wonder Lodge, the RV bus that we just bought not too long ago you guys have been watching videos on. So make sure to hit the subscribe button, guys, because there's many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching.